1802nd episode of Nagpur's most happening Facebook live show show ka naam Raj ki baat women of the year ke sath really want to thank Parik brother jewelers presenting Raj ki baat women of the year in association with Pehnava boutique also a big thank you to Stylex kitchens and wardrobes a big thank you to Mampi Reusable diapers for children Nagpur ka hospital Orange City hospital and Live Fit with Pooja Shelke meri aaj ki jo mehman hai she is a physiotherapist a very popular physiotherapist in central india most importantly she has a journey from bangalore to america to nagpur a bangalore to nagpur nagpur to america she has a, a journey which has education which has health care and most importantly love and concern for people in pain please welcome my guest today the women of the year please welcome dr angelina dias ma'am hello and namaskar swagat aapka raj ki baat mein thank you raj thank you for such a pleasant and a warm welcome for me thank so uh, the journey starts from bangalore you were born brought up in bangalore yes. and uh, it was marriage who got here to nagpur yeah so ma'am when you were uh, you know when you were a child what was the dream do you come from a family who is you know or somebody in your family is from the medical fraternity or represented the med- you know the medical professionals yes my mom was a matron in a mm-hmm. hospital mm-hmm. and probably all my childhood games happened in the hospital itself i always mm-hmm. played doctor doctor games mm-hmm. so i was always inclined to be a medical profession and probably caring and looking after the patient was a game for me more than a profession mm-hmm. eventually i developed it into a profession but mm-hmm. if you ask me what my dream was i mm-hmm. always wanted to be a pilot mm-hmm. i was also a um, selected to be a cpr commercial pilot license also i went for the course for few days for mm-hmm. 10 days mm-hmm. but yes uh, with all the plan which i already had in my head and my mom wanted didn't want me to be a pilot and stuff like that at that point of time i took a decision to be a physio and you wanted people to live well of course yes that's always <laughs> been my dream <laughs> but ma'am uh, when it comes to physiotherapy i mean uh, you know an option from becoming a pilot to to become a physiotherapy why a physiotherapist yes so um, basically i wanted to be a doctor in the medical whether it is nbbs or physiotherapy was not the criteria mm-hmm. i am not uh, that ambitious that i wanted to be a physiotherapist but my dad was my inspiration mm-hmm. so while he was in uh, manipal hospital many many years back he had seen the work of physio and how they were doing things so he put it in, ingrained into my head that this is what a physio does so eventually i developed the love for the profession mm-hmm. so although i got a seat in mbbs dental and also engineering mm-hmm. so it was a turning point for me the day i had to take the admission i lost my dad oh my god so i think that was one of the main factor where i took wanted to take my dad's dream i had Mm-hmm. but it became a part of me and i don't regret it at all even one bit mm-hmm. because i'm very very proud to make people independent india has got independent but we all get dependent with our physical sickness or whatever happens so mm-hmm. i feel i make everyone fly i couldn't fly mm-hmm. but i feel i can make everyone fly with their own functional movement but then when uh, you know when you have this this kind of desire and aspiration to to you know to fly and help people to, you know to you know to fly but then and suddenly this this decision comes in a girl's life yes. when it comes to marriage right leaving home and coming so far i'm sure before marriage you never came to nagpur did you no i didn't even know where nagpur was you did not know <laughs> not on the map of the india yes. of the country yes. you never knew that it was i this- uh, i had only heard of nagpur mm-hmm. but i was in fact when i got initially married i thought i was going to mp Mm-hmm. that is what i was thinking because those days we used to have atlas map and those were very very tiny letter where nagpur was written right so it was on the border between mp and maharashtra so mm-hmm. till i came here until i kept telling people i'm going to mp i didn't know it was maharashtra that mm-hmm. time so but yes now i know everything. so when when i mean what was the reason that you took a decision of uh, saying yes to a nagpur boy <laughs> that was a history yes it was i met my husband uh, in another place itself another state as well mm-hmm. so it was my parents my family everything fell in place and mm-hmm. then it was all about getting married to the person rather than city or the state mm-hmm. so your life is where your husband is that kind of thing 
but then the life in bangalore and the life in nagpur is is i mean what i know is 21 years it's been 21 years been now 21 so years. 21 years back also bangalore was more like a like a you know a, a, a first grade city uh, you know a mit- metro yes. because being the capital of a state yes. if i'm not wrong yeah, yeah? Yes. so uh, from coming from a capital of the state to the second capital of a state this journey it was uh, initially very very uh, what to say it was traumatizing in the beginning for me mm-hmm. ki it was all rosy enough until i got married but then when i started off here it was like i was seeing somewhere which I, a world which i'd never seen mm-hmm. but uh, luckily i think my profession my work kept me so busy mm-hmm. whether it is nagpur or bangalore or wherever whichever part of the world patients are patients mm-hmm. uh, i had a little barrier with the language i couldn't uh, really communicate marathi mm-hmm. but since i was multilingual my mom is from mangalore and she speaks konkani and i could understand konkani so i could relate uh marathi with konkani and i could catch up what patients were saying mm-hmm. i picked up on few words like dukte and stuff like that which right. means to me right. so there was never a time where i regretted and said oh i'm from bangalore why i have come here mm-hmm. i think my work kept me going and until today i feel if not for my work i i, I don't exist that's my identity so uh 21 years back when you thought of continuing this journey of being a physiotherapist you got into a profession of teaching also yes so how was that journey i love teaching mm-hmm. until date i do have uh, interns coming to me observers coming from me i think teaching has been a part of me since a childhood even when i was 7 standard i used to take uh, tuitions of my own class mm-hmm. classmates because mm-hmm. i come from a convent background so we they used to tell people who are you know not so well to do you should they don't get to go to tuitions but since I, those days i was a topper so mm-hmm. i started teaching where, out of love for teaching from when i was in 7 Mm-hmm. so it became a part of me as i was studying and was teaching my friends so when i got a chance to be a teacher as a professor in the college mm-hmm. i i thought i was living my dream so mm-hmm. i thoroughly enjoyed that but as you teach you learn more you keep researching more Absolutely. so that kept me updated quite a bit and it still keeps me updated mm-hmm. but then uh, about how many years of teaching then about 5 years 5 years of teaching yes. and then you thought of uh, you know joining a hospital yes and working there for about 11 years yes so <laughs> that so thing. this 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 you know this 21 years then 11 years and 5 years this shows there is a lot of commitment behind everything you do right so when you give this kind of commitment what do you expect see it's uh, it's the we are industry only such that we don't ever expect we are always in a service mind we mm-hmm. never think that i do something and i'll get something in return mm-hmm. but if you talk to me as an entrepreneur point of view there is always a business growth you see mm-hmm. right you want to see yourself growing i right. saw myself growing as a teacher as a as a hod as head of the department i did a lot of development that itself was a learning for me mm-hmm. so that was always a growing curve for me mm-hmm. now that as a stand alone a uh, business or an entrepreneur person i have service as well as to grow my business mm-hmm. so i do have a much more dreams to fly hopefully i achieve it soon <laughs> when did you thought of coming up with your own physiotherapy center uh it has a story behind it mm-hmm. uh, i was uh, actually uh, very well settled with uh, my previous job it was a corporate job very decorated i was happy with my job mm-hmm. and uh, there was a patient who a young girl who was 22 year old and mm-hmm. she had a spinal injury and she had incontinence mm-hmm. uh so there was no treatment as such at that point of view mm-hmm. me being a research oriented person i always kept researching i knew there was a treat i knew what i could do what i'm doing right now is pelvic floor rehab mm-hmm. i knew i could do that mm-hmm. and uh, uh, so i was treating her of uh, you know my work hours i used to treat her in another hospital and she was poor and i couldn't really i didn't even charge her mm-hmm. but at that very moment after her treatment when she was cured the day i was going back home i met with a very terrible accident mm-hmm. where i was under the truck and this is my second life that's when i decided when people like these people there's no one to help i need a service for them i need to start up this specialty uh, separately specifically for them so mm-hmm. when i was talking to my some of my 
colleague, my seniors in the in the hospital, there was no much interest or inclination towards this mm -hmm. because it's a very niche area. And nobody, it's not, it was not a money making thing or something. But I was very very passionate about what I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. So I think that was a driving force. One day I just said, yes, I'm done, and I want to do something for people with incontinence. Right. So initially, when I started, I took a single room and I just started as a incontinence rehab clinic. So mm -hmm. until date, I have my clinic's name as Liberal Physiotherapy and Incontinence Rehab Clinic. Mm -hmm. That's how I started this journey. That was a cause for me to shift from a corporate job to a private sector. But in phys like like physiotherapy, uh, you know, if you look at this vertical of you know uh, medical support and medical care and health care, yes. um, still people are a little hesitant when it comes to going to a physiotherapist. Okay. There are n number of problems yes. where or diseases or uh, you know ailments which can be cured by a physiotherapy where you don't need to go for a surgical you know aspect right. but a physiotherapy can you know a physiotherapist can actually help you out and you know uh, take good care of it still there is lack of awareness what's yes. your thought over it uh, rightly said awareness is very 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 poor especially around uh, in our country and see it's not the same everywhere mm -hmm. but it has changed it has evolved the whole physiotherapy profession itself has evolved from what it started in world war 2 to now it, there is a drastic change in world war 2 it was started for only for soldiers or army to get them back to you know into the uh, war uh, back into the field but now it has evolved into so many add on up updating there's our skills there's technology which is added on so there is so much more than what people think as what a physiotherapist could do physiotherapy means people would say it's a 10 days affair it is not at all a 10 days affair mm -hmm. you don't even build your biceps in 10 days so people think i need to recover in 10 days which are with the problems that they have for 10 years it doesn't happen it is a slow process it is mm -hmm. a step by step process so the biggest barrier like you say the awareness is really uh, missing but we are trying to create that we are trying to conduct camps free camps as physiotherapists i am also a member of indian association of physiotherapy women's in mm -hmm. nagpur district mm -hmm. so we as a women wing over last 5 years we have done several camps not only in urban areas even in the rural areas to create awareness mm -hmm. now people are understanding that so now i do have patients who are coming and telling me we don't want to get under the knife can you help us so when we do and they give their uh, you know testimonials is what i keep sharing in my social media also to just to create that awareness so if each physiotherapist comes up and shows their work and what they do i think people will eventually get to know how important physiotherapy as a uh, healthcare service is why should somebody come to you know live well physiotherapy center our usp itself is a personalized care so and with 20 years of experience rather 21 years of experience uh, the skilled therapy that we give uh, tailored therapy that we give is something i would say all everyone should visit with them. Um, what are the challenges being a physiotherapist? Yes, uh, first of all, uh, to explain what physiotherapy is to people is difficult. And uh, to frankly, uh, even if I look at it, even in the, if I say in the bigger hospitals, you know, there's always a hierarchy. So there is no direct walking. People are telling, agar doctor ne bataya, tab aenge referral ke mm. Then they, actually physiotherapy is no more a profession, which is, which is a referral pr profession. It mm. can be an independent uh, profession where people can come to the physiotherapist directly. directly and and definitely it's the job of a physiotherapist if it is not in their purview to refer to the respective doctors and specialities, whichever is concerned. But they do, they can assess clinically very thoroughly. They are very competent to do that. And refer to the concerned doctors immediately. Uh, ab kya karna chahti? How, how do you want to take Live Well uh, Physiotherapy Clinic to the next level? Yes. What is now, it 2.0 plan? My, I, I, I shouldn't speak before things happen, mm -hmm. but definitely Live Well is planning to expand more, mm -hmm. uh, probably more into different branches and a different sector mm -hmm. which you will keep watching and see what happens <laughs> uh if this is my last question yes if you have written a book of your life okay and you have written a book of your life and you have doctor angelina dias uske niche kaun sa support kaun se si baat kaun sa sa thought likha rehna chahiye jisse padhne ke baad log doctor angelina dias ko hamesha yaad kar rakhe yes i would say always dream big 
work hard stay committed you will achieve anything sky is the limit mm-hmm. so ये जितनी भी चीजें आपने बोली उसमें से एक ऐसा कौन सा मूल मंत्र है कौन सी एक ऐसी बात है जो आप अपनी जिंदगी में पूरी फॉलो करते हैं आई वुड से डेडिकेशन कॉन्स्टेंट डेडिकेशन नो मैटर हाउ मेनी टाइम्स यू फॉल कीप गोइंग दैट इज व्हाट आई फॉलो मैम यू आर एन इंस्पिरेशन यू आर एन इंस्पिरेशन फॉर अ लॉट ऑफ पीपल आउट देर स्पेशली द फिजियोथेरापिस्ट बिकॉज it's actually very hard to get you know when you come up with your independent clinic for a physiotherapist to get uh, that kind of business because there is a lot of investment behind it as a entrepreneur it's very difficult for a physiotherapist to have a good stand and i think specially i mean this is alarming and a matter of concern for women who are you know physiotherapists and it's difficult for them but i think people like you when you know people like you come and establish yourself so well and uh, you know become uh, inspirations for these people there is a light of hope and this hope says everything that if today things are not working out tomorrow they will if you actually are dedicated with whatever you do thank you for being a part of my show thank you for making my dream come true to interview you and uh, it's an honor a pleasure meeting you ma'am thank, thank you so you much so much thank you so much super dr angelina dai se baat hui mulakat hui this exclusive episode of raj ki baat dekhiye main hamesha se jab chhota tha to mujhe aisa lagta hai ki ek din na main ek angel ka interview karunga aur fir aaj main kaisi एंजलिना का इंटरव्यू कर रहा हूँ जो वाकई में जिस जिंदगी में जो रोल प्ले कर रही है वो एंजल का ही है और मुझे ऐसा लगता है कि ऐसी महिला है जो अपने पर्सनल जीवन को बैलेंस रखते हुए अपने काम को सबसे ज्यादा तवज्जो देती है अपने काम की तरफ समर्पित रहती है तो वो समाज में एक एग्जाम्पल सेट करती है और वो एग्जाम्पल बस यही होता है जो समझने की जरूरत है कि अगर आप चीजों को बैलेंस करके वाकई में अच्छे से चल सकते हो तो आप एक इंस्पिरेशन बन के चलते हैं और ये हर कोई कर सकता है पॉसिबल है बस इतना है कि वो करने का मन चाहिए वो चाह चाहिए और जहां चाह है वहां रहा है और नवजोत सिंह सिद्धू कहते हैं कि प्रेम परिचय को पहचान बना देता है वीराने को गुलिस्तान बना देता है मैं अपनी नहीं डॉक्टर एंजुलिना डायस की कहता हूं अपने काम के प्रति समर्पण और भाव इंसान को भगवान बना देता है आपसे फिर होगी मुलाकात इन राज की बात तब तक आप अपना ध्यान रखें सुरक्षित रहें स्वच्छ रहें स्वस्थ रहें मस्त रहें खुश रहें व्यस्त रहें परिवार के साथ एक अच्छा वक्त बिताएं और अगर आपके परिवार में एक बेटी है जो अपने घर वालों के साथ जब भोजन करती है तो सबके चेहरों को देखकर समझने की कोशिश करती है कि सबके चेहरे क्या कहते हैं अपने घर में जब खेलती है तो कहीं ना कहीं दिन भर इंतजार करती है कि कब शाम को पिता आएंगे और उनके साथ थोड़े से अच्छी बातें कर पाए एक दिन जब पिता अपनी इच्छा जाहिर करते हैं कि वो चाहते हैं कि बेटी डॉक्टर बने और जब वो एक दिन एक सफल डॉक्टर बन जाती है तो समझिए वो डॉक्टर एंजलिना टायस बन रही है जिंदा रहें जय हिंद